Hi everyone, Brian here. It's been uh, it's been a hot minute since I made a video, and I have so many things that I want to share with you. But since it's been five months since I posted a video, a lot has changed, and so I thought I'll bring you up to speed and tell you what's new and what's old with my setup. Touchscreen wise, everything is pretty much the same. I find myself using the Stream Deck a lot more. So much so that I'm considering adding another Stream Deck Excel just to have more buttons instead of diving into folders and pages. I find myself using the touchscreen for more specific actions like grouping multiple tracks together, hiding tracks, putting multiple tracks into folders, things that I don't do very often. Since I have the S1 and it's a pretty tall unit, I find it pretty hard to reach for my iPad, so I'll leave the uncommonly used commands there. Speaking of the S1, it's still great when it works, it's just not working really well recently. One of the faders, actually now two of the faders, keeps on sticking, and so it's not responding to Cubase, so it writes false values to Cubase, thus ruining my mix and my balance, which sucks. And then it randomly shuts down sometimes after I haven't used it in a few minutes, so I have to physically restarted, and that's on top of losing connection with Cubase every few minutes, leaving me with just faders and none of the buttons. I've been looking for a replacement, and I was almost tempted to buy the Console 1 fader, but decided not to go for it, since I have to load an instant of the Console 1 plugin for every track that I create, which is a pain. All this to say that I really hope that Steinberg comes up with a dedicated controller for Cubase soon, but I'm not counting on it. In the meantime, I did buy a replacement for the S1 until something better comes along for Cubase. I'm not going to tell you what it is right now because I want to make a video about it, so I want to test it and see how it works. However, when I was there, I saw my first crush for um, DAW controllers, which is the Avid Artist Control with the four faders and the screen in the middle. And that screen sucked because it wasn't a capacitive touch, it was a resistive touch. So you had to like push on it instead of like just having the touch like on an iPhone. And so um, the accuracy was garbage. And the faders, I actually had two units because the faders kept on failing. If you own an artist controller or artist mix, you know that the faders just break. And then I'm not one to just swap out the faders and solder them and everything. I'm not good with that stuff. So. I was almost tempted to get the artist control and just go back to my natural habitat of controllers, but um, no, I can't do the Yukon protocol anymore. I don't think it works really well with Cubase, but I digress. That's pretty much gear-wise. Let's go on to other stuff that are new and exciting. So gear-wise, this is pretty much it. I did replace the um, Native Instrument keyboard with an Ovation one just because my Native Instrument one died and they wouldn't repair it. So this was in stock and so I just got it. Nothing too exciting. However, my macro and workflow game has stepped up dramatically in the past few months. See, the secret with macros is that you find a few that are actually useful and that you use them a lot and you use them. If you start adding more and more just to test the possibilities, you end up with a lot of macros that are very cool but not very useful. Or to quote the great Jeff Goldblum, Yeah, yeah, but your scientists were so preoccupied with whether or not they could, they didn't stop to think if they should. And so I was keeping to this theory very well until recently when I was just bored <laughs> and so I let my imagination run wild, which led me to this first macro that I want to share with you today. This one started with my random plugin macro, which goes through all of my plugins, selects a random one from the list, types it into my plugin search, and then applies it. If you haven't seen it before, it's really cool. It's been on my Instagram for a while. Um, follow me, socials, TikTok, Instagram, anything. But anyways, um, let me show you how this is done. So basically, I select this insert and I want to put a random plugin. I don't know which plugin I want. I just press my uh, macro right here. And then every time, it's going to load up a random plugin. Um, let's give it another shot. There you go. Uh, what's this? Oh yeah, I love this EQ. This is great. Another random plugin. I don't know. Oh, C4. Great plugin. Another one. What should I put in my strings? What should I put in my strings? Um, oh yeah. Strings with, uh, saturation. Great saturation, by the way. So, this is really cool because if you're not sure what you want to do, you let fate decide and it's great. Yeah. Anyways, this works really well. This is a cool macro. You can create it for yourself with pretty much any DAW. However, I thought if I can create a random list of all my plugins and it selects a random one, I can create 
a list of five kick samples or five snare samples and their locations, and then have Keyboard Maestro select a random sample from that list and import it into my Cubase, resulting in a random sample that I know that works, essentially letting fate take some creative decision. And while this didn't work because of some limitations in Keyboard Maestro's architecture, the seed was already planted and I was obsessed. So I started looking for ways that I can actually achieve this or better yet, perfect this. And if you follow me on Instagram, you probably already saw this, but if you haven't, you're in for a treat. So this is the final evolution of this thought process. My thought process for this macro was, well, how can I still make this five random kicks and five random snares happen, even if I can't do it in Keyboard Maestro, but I was starting to get greedy and like, maybe it's not five, maybe it's 10. What if it's all my kick samples? What if it's like every kick sample that I have? Or what if it's just across all of my samples? And the reason for that is I find Cubase to be a very predictable DAW. Unlike Ableton and Bitwig and other DAWs that you can basically create LFOs and random values and random LFOs controlling other val so many values in your plugins and stuff like that. you can do a lot of random stuff creatively in Ableton and Bitwig that you just can't do in Cubase. And I want to find ways that I can introduce unpredictability in my workflow in such a predictable Duh. And so I really wanted to see if I can just drag a random sample out of Cubase using Keyboard Maestro. And the problem with doing that in Keyboard Maestro is that the longer your list is, the longer it'll take to go through it and choose a random one. And I have more than 10,000 samples. Thank you, Splice. <laughs> and so I thought, is there another way that I can do this? And um, apparently in Media Bay, you have a button that is shuffle results. And so every time that you hit it, did Cubis just crash on me? What the hell? Come on, Steinberg. Okay, take two. Um, so here we are in Cubis. And so I realized that you can shuffle your results. So if you search for something, or even if you don't, um, you can shuffle your result. And so if you have a sample selected um, and you hit home, you'll go to the first one. So I hit shuffle, we're still in the same sample. I hit home, it's a different one. And so every time I hit this shuffle, home, shuffle, home, I get a new sample. That's really cool. And so this was my key to making this happen. And so what I thought would be cool is basically take every 16th note and load a random sample, have it chop right at the 16th note mark and then kind of have like a random loop every time. And that's definitely achievable, but I thought if you throw in an eighth there, that'll be really cool. However, if you do throw in an eighth there, you can get a loop that is longer than a bar because if you do 16 16th samples, then you get a full bar. If you start adding eighth notes in there, it'll be more than a bar. And I want it to be exactly one bar. And so I found a clever way to have Cubase count how many steps it did, but randomly choose if it's going to be an eighth or a sixteenth. And so I introduce to you the greatest random glitch maker ever created. Um, here we go. You know what? I'm going to put my media bay in the other screen. You won't be able to see it. However, here we go. Sixteenth note. Eighth note, eighth note, 16th, eighth note, eighth note, this was eighth, this is 16th, and one more 16th, and stop! It's a full bar. All we have to do is loop this thing, and I just created a random loop that I haven't heard before ever in my life. Let's check it out. Fantastic. This is so great, because I can do whatever I want. Like, it's so random. And I would have never come up with this loop. And then you can throw in, you know what? Random plugin. What are we going to put on it? What is it? It's the SSL bus compressor. Hold on, there it is. Shh. 
short. Maybe another random plugin? So much randomness. Oh, bit crush. <laughs> You know what? Bit crush before the compressor. Fantastic! Let's do another one, just for kicks. New version. Here we go. That's it. We're done. We're done. Let's okay, so here we have like a blank one because the sample doesn't start until later, but let's listen to it as it is. Hold on, I'll by I bypass the, uh, the inserts. There was a shuffle there that I kind of like because where the sample is. However, let's get rid of the silence by just moving the audio around. And with a random sample. <laughs> What more can you ask for? This is such a fun thing and just like a really great experiment. But honestly, like if you just put, I don't know, um, a shaper box on it and create like really interesting stuff with like high pass, you can create very interesting top loops with this. I don't know, I don't know. I think it's really cool. I think this is a great macro. I think there is a lot of <laughs> Unused potential with this one. Sure, it sounds like crap now, but like use your creativity, but you get a result. You get like the raw material that you didn't think that you're going to get. And I encourage you to try and do something similar in your own DAW or in Cubis. If you want me to go through a tutorial on how to actually build this, let me know in the comments below. Let's move on to macro number two. So this first macro that I showed you, I don't use very often. Just maybe when I wanna get like really creative or get out of my own head, or if I'm really, really stuck, this is like a really great way to do it, but I don't use it on a daily basis. The second macro, however, I use it every day. And if you're a Mac user that uses Cubase, I promise you, you would want to use this as well. So for the longest time, I had this dream for an app or software if you're on Windows. <laughs> that would basically scan all of my plugins and then list it based on name, category, manufacturer, VST2, VST3, etc. That way, if you're looking for a reverb plugin but you're not quite sure which one, you just type in reverb and then it lists all of your reverb plugins for you. Or if you want that one vintage compressor from Plugin Alliance but you can't remember the name of, you just type in compressor, Plugin Alliance, and there you have it. And while this is a simple app to make and if you possess the coding skill and will to make it, please, reach out. I do not know how to code Mac apps. And so I had to figure out a way to make one myself. Enter Alfred. Alfred, which is exclusively a Mac app. If you're on Mac and you're not using Alfred, use Alfred. For years, Alfred would let users create workflows, which are like little mini apps inside of the Alfred architecture. And so I created a few of those over the years, but they were nice, but they were nothing like this one. So with Alfred, I was able to create a database of all of my favorite and most used plugins in the spirit of spending more time with plugins that I already own instead of buying new ones every other Thursday, which I do. The list is cleverly tagged by name, company, type of plugin, but I also added a few of my own tags like Air for EQ plugins that I use to make things brighter or Vintage for anything that was modeled after really old equipment. And because it's using Alfred lists, I can also have a little picture of the plugin for better visual representation of the plugins that I want to use. That way, I can make a plugin list that is that much more personal and fit my workflow a lot better. And to top it all off, since it's using the Alfred architecture, it has the option to remember my most used selection and sort my list based on that. Meaning that my most used plugin, which is ProQ if you were wondering, it's just literally two clicks away and the rest is just below it. Again, in descending order, which is really cool. And I could have stopped there and have like a really cool list of my plugins and get exactly what I wanted. But I thought if I'm already using Alfred, I can bring Keyboard Maestro into the game. So now when I want to insert a plugin, I don't have to think of like, which plugin do I want to use and then move my mouse and interact with my DAW. No, all I have to do is click Command I for insert, which both opens up my plugin list and toggles my insert section. And then I select the plugin that I want. And then Keyboard Maestro does the rest for me. Let me show you what I'm talking about. So, 
here we are in Cubase. Um, I want to put something on this list. Command I. You know what? Hold on, hold on, hold on. Let's toggle off the insert section. I want to put a plugin on this track. Command I. Toggles the insert section. And so now, um, let's say I want, uh, let's go with air. And so I have fresh air and mag EQ4, which is great. And then, yeah, <laughs> it just did it. Let's find something else. Let's do vintage. What's vintage? Um, RC20 is vintage. Yeah, let's do that. Great. Finds the empty slot, puts the plugin on. Uh, it's there. It's on the other screen. It's done. Um, Pro-Q? Sure. Pro-Q. But what if I don't want pro It did it. What if I don't want Pro-Q? What if I just want an EQ, but I don't know which one? Here are my favorite EQs. And they're, yeah. And also, you see these uh, little command one, two, three, four, five. I don't have to scroll through this. I can go, oh, you know what? Let's do the focus right one. That's command five. It'll just do it. And then finds the right one and focus right. Uh, what can we do else? Compressor. Um, 1176, great. Let's use that. Oh, this is a great chain. This is gonna sound so dope. And what's really cool about it is if I go 1176, there is also like extra features that you can do with it. So uh, say I want the 1176, but I don't want Rev A, I want the other one. If I hit option, it changes the picture and you can see that it's the, um, it's the other one from UAD, the black one that not a lot of people use, but now I can just toggle through it. And if I want it, I could actually change the title and not the subtitle, not the UADX one. And so if I just choose that, there you go. I have the other UAD one, give it a sec. It's done. If I want LA two way, I have, um, I have options. I have the opto compressor. I have the LA three a, and the silver one, let's do the Opto. This is kind of like my new favorite LA-2A, even though the UED one is also good. But I digress. This is such a fast way to just get, um, um, let's do distortion. I have so many distortions that I can choose from. I have Impact, I have Rift, I have Spice Rex. Spice Rex, good. Uh, let's do Command-4. And then it finds the empty slot, puts the plugin name on it, and it's done. I'm producing so fast recently. I'm mixing so fast. I don't have to think about it. This is honestly the biggest leap that I made in months since I started this whole macro stuff. This is probably the most impactful macro that I created recently. This is a game changer for me. So these are the biggest changes in my workflow. Other than that, things are pretty much business as usual. Not a lot has changed. I'm very happy with my workflow as it is, and I'm just waiting to see what NAM 2003 will bring with it. Maybe we'll get to see new controllers or maybe an introduction for MIDI 2.0, which will be amazing. And rest assured that I will keep you posted with all my findings and I'll, I'll keep you posted along the way. But yeah, that's just pretty much it, just like a, semi quick update to finally share something on YouTube and let you know what I've been doing lately. And I, I have so many things that I'm dying to share with you. And so I'm happy to just get something out there and to let you know that I'm back for now <laughs> with the intention of making a lot more content. And so uh, if you're a nerd like me and you like macros, you love Cubase and, and, and you're sick of your mouse and keyboard and you want to just work instead of interacting with your dog, Subscribe to the channel. We're gonna have a lot of fun. This is going to be great. And so, yeah, this is pretty much it. Now I'm just going off script. So I'm gonna stop talking, stay creative, stay awesome. I'm gonna see you really, really soon with more videos. Cheers.